Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at how to lay things out with a tile. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we have a code pen demo that uses that. So uh, here's a little trick for you in the Explorer. Uh, you can press this bar right here, not these guys, but the actual bar, and it will take you down to the bottom. And press the bottom bar, and it'll take you to the top. How's that for exploration? <laughs> uh, we're trying to figure out how to put a little arrow in here or something like that, but it just looks awkward. So right now it's a, just an Easter egg that we use quite a bit to get to the gold bars for our footer. And here, and this is on any of the pages in Zim. And here is a code pen right here. So I'm going to press code pen. That takes you through to our code pen. Uh, what do we call it? Preview or showcase. Oh, the showcase. And the showcase always kind of stays like this until we come and change the showcase. So I'll probably do for a showcase change. Uh, however, if you want to see the latest, then you would go to public right here. So it's not very easy to find, is it? But here are our latest public ones. And this is our latest pen, where indeed we have made uh, some layout here with tiles. And we've got a variety of ways to lay things out, including the layout class. But we're not using the layout class in here. Generally, we don't use the layout class if we're uh, using the, the fit mode. So this is the fit mode right here. You see that? This rectangle is keeping its aspect ratio of 1024 by 768, and it's fitting it within that frame right there. Uh, therefore, we don't really need the layout class. The layout class is built primarily for the full mode where, you, uh, will, where you'll have these regions that will scale to um, uh, fill the, the full mode. <laughs> All right, so if we're wanting to do a layout just like of the this bar right here with a bunch of different things on it, we have found that the easiest way in Zim is to use a tile. Uh, tile wasn't really made for that. Tile was made for tiling art in a sense, uh, but uh, we found that it is also good for laying things out much like a table is in HTML. However, I mean, we all know what happened to the table. It became taboo to use a table. It's like, ah, no, don't think that. Everything's locked in. Uh, there's lots of times where we want to lock in things like this. I don't want to wrap these things. I, ju I just don't. Um, we do have on the canvas a wrapper. So when we were talking about laying things out, uh, there is a wrapper, and the wrapper handles uh, wrapping. So let's go take a look at that. Zim under examples uh, and find a wrapper. I think it's down. Yeah, there it is right there. So this is a wrapper where that stuff will wrap. And we've got the wrapper in a window. And hey, kind of welcome to what HTML is good at. But it's right here in the canvas. So that's quite exciting to have that. As you can see, there's all sorts of things here, including voids and reversings and alignments and inner alignments. And, oh! So this is very much like uh, the options that would be available in something like the Flexbox. There's also the Layout class, which I suppose I could show you just quickly since we're exploring. Uh, where would we find that under examples? An example of a Layout class. That might have been one. No. Okay. Something that looked like that, though. And it was... Uh, I remember it now. Hmm. What an exploration. It was under the cat features. And there it is right there. Pop. So I'm going to hit the B key, the bounds key. This is a kind of an extreme version of the layout class. First of all, we've got some uh, adaptive design there. And we're uh, the normal layout class is the, well, <laughs> I don't know which parts are normal. One, two, three. The three sort of regions as we go down that's a, in a vertical layout. What we're showing here is we can actually put a horizontal layout. This is a horizontal layout at the top. 
within a vertical layout and blah 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 blah. So this was um, some advancements in the layout class, but you get the idea. So that's all laying out responsively. And we have that too. And that is also kind of similar to um, Flexbox, sort of, except it doesn't do wrapping. We call it Flex Design. It's very similar to Adobe Flex, where we're taking these regions and scaling the regions within there. And once again, we would do that with a full screen view as opposed to a fit mode. But there are many times where we want to just do a simple layout, like put these things next to one another, and it's quite easy to do with the tile. So let's have a look at how we did the top bar here. So I'm coming down. We've um, aligned the tile, or V-aligned the tile in the center. Otherwise, it's all pretty well the same size, but that label, for instance, would normally be at the top. The V-aligned top is the default. So it's uh, V-align on the tile is a little long to get to. It's like a later parameter. Here's our tile right here, where we've got the object that we're tiling. Because remember, it was, you know, we used to say, hey, just tile the circle, and it would tile a whole bunch of circles. And we would use that for art. Um, now we're using it for something different. We're tiling uh, more what we call unique items. So rather than cloning and repeating a tile, we're actually tiling unique items. And therefore, this last parameter that we've gotten here is for the unique true. So what we're tiling is the object, which happens to be an array of things at the moment. Then there's the columns, the rows, the column spacing or the spacing in the horizontal and the spacing in the vertical. And we only have one uh, row, so it really doesn't matter what we put there. And then we have this unique parameter. If we didn't have the unique parameter there, then we would get this. It would randomly pick from the top. Oh, and clone as it goes to. So it's randomly picking these and cloning them possibly. <laughs> you wanna see, one, you know, see another one? And we could make art with that kind of thing. That time I put the sizes first, it got two of those. Well, it got the same, it got the right number of things, um, but uh, in, the, in a different order. And now it's got three steppers. And so now obviously that's not going to work very well. In other words, it's important to do the true there. Important for a couple reasons. One is it will uh, pick these in order, which is good. And the other thing is it won't clone them. Because up above, you can see where we, we've defined these things. We've got a color picker, color uh, second color picker, some sizes. Oh, that's the size label. And then the steppers right here. They've all got change events on them, which are calling update pen, which is, I don't know, wherever. There it is. OK, if we clone them, the, the event doesn't come with a clone. So you need to um, use uh, true there to prevent the cloning, but also do them in order. There is a clone false too, if you want to anyway, for that, we'll leave that for now. So when you're tiling things, that's what you want to do. The other thing about it is um, we have here scaled the color picker, or sorry, the uh, steppers. So the steppers were made quite big. <laughs> Let's just run that again and you'll see there'll be a bit of a problem. Those are big. They're all ready for mobile, that's for sure. Uh, we were intending to, in the last version of Zim, reduce those probably by half, <laughs> I guess. Or at least to the same same kind of height as a button. Those buttons are smaller. Uh, those buttons have been scaled too. But anyway, we're going to step out and just do some manual scaling in just a sec. But Or we'll redo this in just a sec. But for now, we're looking at this. Let me adjust this because it is live. And that was an undo back to a scale of 0.3. But it didn't really take much to figure out what scale to use. And as a matter of fact, we have an idea. And maybe we can explore that idea. Dum, dum, dum. We, we can explore that idea uh, as, as we go out and take a look. And that, that idea would be to maybe automatically scale things to fit within column and row widths and heights of a tile. So we can maybe look for that in the next version of Zim. So you get it. We made the step, we made all this stuff, and then we just pass it into the array. Great. Let's go take a look at the bottom one. So the bottom one has these things. I don't think that was in it. That's just our standard Zim in the corner sort of thing. So here's our bottom bar. 
we made a base of a rectangle. Why did we do that? I don't know. Does it have a rectangle? A loader. Bottom. Is this our really our bottom bar? There's a button. I recognize that. Do we have a loader somewhere? Oh, the loader is used to save this thing. So that's what the save is. And the base. Ah, okay, right. That makes sense. When you go and save something, by the way, this is going to make scribbles like that. Um, sorry, I didn't show you what it was, did I? Or randomly place scribbles, or we could uh, choose some splatter and make this a different size. Whatever. And redo. And different colors too. Green and blue. Oh, cool. All right, uh, so then we can hit save. And when we hit save, it, it downloads that picture. And there's our picture with the Z on it. Very nice. Oh, pretty, pretty art. Pretty art. All uh, right, so if you want that to be background transparent, then don't put a rectangle in there because the stage, when we save out to a file, the stage color is not in there. So it can be, we can make a background transparent uh, transparent quite easily, except we didn't want it to be background transparent, so we basically put a big rectangle on the bottom there. And uh, well, I don't see it added. A loader, we must maybe we took it away. Base, let's do a search for base. I don't really know how to do this search. Oh, there's some, oh, there's some bases taps. Ah, we only were adding it when we actually saved the file. That's kind of silly. We could have added it all the time. It would have been just fine. Oh, are we using a, a motion controller? Yeah, yeah, we're using a motion controller. Okay, so when we use a motion controller, I didn't really mean to take you into the actual workings of this. When we use a motion controller, um, we don't want the motion controller to work if we start on a button. So you see how I started on the button there or on this thing, uh, whereas if I started here, I'd be drawing. Um, we don't want to start drawing when we're on these buttons. So by default, uh, only motion controllers only works with the stage. So if you put something over top of the stage, you have to put it into the mouse down includes, which is a parameter here in the motion controller called. Mouse down includes. And so if we added that background to the stage, then the motion controller wouldn't work unless we said, hey, mouse down include that background. And that was just annoying. So basically, we don't add it to the stage until we actually press the save. Isn't that neat? So note that it's not added there. And when we tap the save button, then we add it. And we also remove the bar. We remove these bars in the top bar. And then we do the save right there. Then we put the bars back and then we remove the base again. Isn't that cool? So as soon as that, that save hits, whatever's on the stage, which this stuff is no longer on the stage, whatever, or well, this is and that isn't, these aren't, um, that's what it saves. And then, cool, huh? So that's how we got rid of the bars. We left the Z there, nice. All right, blah bitty blah bitty blah. But what we were wanting to take a look at is how did we do that thing down at the bottom? And I don't know how to get rid of it. Just to refresh, I guess. I, I searched for base, and now base is all. I, can, I can't figure out how to get rid of that, so I'll just refresh it there. That gets rid of it. Yay. And we're back down to looking at the bottom bar. So ignoring the, the base and the loader, here is the save button with its tap event. And note we've scaled it to 0.8. Here is the checkbox and the stepper, and we've reduced that scale as well. Looks like we didn't scale the checkbox. Oh, we set the checkbox to a certain size there. And then mm, we have a redo button right there. And then we have our bottom bar, which is our tile. And there are the items that we're tiling. Here's the rest of the information, the calls, the rows, the spacing in between horizontally. The fact that it's true, that means it will take a unique those the, it will take those actual objects and use them. 
We've also scaled it 0.7 and positioned it down there at the bottom so it got scaled again. Uh, otherwise, it would be this scale. And run into some other things. Okay, so how big did we, did we scale the button at all? To 0.8. So that button's smaller than it usually is. We scale the stepper to 0.5. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. We should probably start off with the stepper about the same size as the button, so we need to adjust that a little bit. Anyway, that all didn't fit, so that's why we did it. We could have also done, instead of just manually scaling it, you could use a scale two. Uh, the stage, comma, 80% or something. So that's 80% the width of the stage, and we save that and run it. And then are we centering it somewhere? <laughs> Something, oh, that was the button. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Ah, uh, right, save that. And it was this scale right here that we could do the scale to. Scale two, the stage, comma, not, it's not decimals, it's uh, percentage. So 80%, 70%, whatever. Save that and run. Okay, and then you've got 30% there. Uh, no, two, whatever. 15% uh, of the stage there, 15% of the stage here. All right, with scale two. Whatever. Almost looked about the same, didn't it? So we just eyeballed it. Run. Let's see if there's much difference. Yeah, it's a little smaller. Keep it away from the Z. Uh, we usually have a smaller Z than that. Or do we? No, I guess we don't. That's the normal size. Okay, that's fine. I thought we look bigger than normal. It's not. All right, we had mentioned that we were going to try some ourselves, so let's go to the Zim site now and we'll find the editor. So this shows the very feature demos. And we press that and it go to the editor with the feature demos or any of these and it would go to the feature demo. This one is also now the editor, so you can start off with the editor like this as well. And that takes us to a zap that is a start here zap that we can view the code of that and bring the code in. Anyway, we'll just clear this out, it's clear. And we will do some tiling. So once again, the tile originally was new tile and we would tile something like a new circle and we could make it um, say 50 in radius and we could give it a color, red, and we would say about 20 of them and 10 of them and make them be 10 pixels apart and dot center it on the stage. And so now we've got and test that. Okay, and we could uh, also pass in an array here of colors, red, blue, pink, and save it. Oh, don't save it that way, just do a test. Okay, and that would do a whole bunch of random things, or you could pass in a series here, and it would do a series of colors. So that's why, uh, well, or you could pass in uh, uh, an array right here and make a new rectangle. Uh, we'll just do a default rectangle and test that, and now it does tiles a bunch of rectangles or circles that are these colors. So that's why this initial array was like that, or we could have done a series. I wonder what a series would look like. Can you imagine? Series. We are, after all, doing a Zim Explore. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so that's a series, and I think it's that array thing right there. Becomes a round bracket. Did that work properly? And test. So now we have a series of those things. And if we want that tile to fit on the stage, 
do you know how we could do that? We could go dot scale to the stage. And then we could say 100 comma 100. And that would make sure, not save. Sorry, we used to, in the editor, I used to save because that's how the editor had been built and that's how it was in, in uh, Slate, which is uh, in Zoom Kids and stuff. And all our editors have been just control S and it tests. Well, then we introduced this editor, which has a file system. And so the file system um, would be expected to save the file, but we didn't want to automatically overwrite the current file. So anyway, so we, we don't do control S, it's actually um, alt T to test. So there it is fitting at 100% of the width or the height, whichever is greater. So in this case, it's fitting the width, but if we had something like 15 tiles here and save, oh, don't save it, control or alt T. Wow, I think I got that right on proportion. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, but if I did 20 here and <laughs> hit test, then you can see it's fitting uh, the height. And if you didn't want it bumping up to the edge, which we probably don't, then you could say 90, 90 there and hit test. And now it's 90% uh, the height, or indeed, if this weren't 20 and back to 10, and hit test, 90% the width. Okay, so I think you can see that we can position a tile very nicely and very easily within there using the scale two after the tile is built. Anyway, we're talking about a different type of tile rather than an art artistic tile. We're talking about a tile where we have um, uh, objects. So let's do that. Well, we, those are objects too, but uh, components for instance. So to do components, you can do it right here in the, right here in the array and say new button comma new stepper comma a new label and those can all uh, do things anyway we don't have 20 of those do you want do you want to see what that would look like by the way just if i save this or test oh that's right we made it fit uh, not to bother scaling two and test here it is let me test again so basically what that's doing is just making a whole bunch of randoms. It might be nice to center that. Uh, that would be style. The easiest way to get to an align, it's a few, like it's align is, I don't know, 10th or 11th parameter over. It's a little hard to get to. So just do an align, colon center and a V align, colon center with a style like that. And yeah, we test that. Yeah, it's that much different, but at least they're aligned now. <laughs> okay, so that is a problem. Uh, first of all, we didn't want that many, but if we only wanted three and one, and make it uh, say 40, and this can be zero, then we still don't want this because that's making us three unusual things. We never know what we're going to get because it's randomly picking from this array, unless we say unique is true. And then it does them in the right order. Yay. All right, so you can see that we have a scale issue here. So we could just go dot ska 0.5 and test. It's a little small, unless we were to make the button a bit smaller, which we may want to, if, you know, like making the height roughly proportional to the label, then we could put a scale on the button, dot ska. Uh, just out of interest, before I do that though, what is the scale of the button, So it, or the scale of the stepper, so it's about the right scale? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So about 0.6 the size that it actually is now, and it would be a fine stepper. <laughs> in line with the the other things. Okay, we'll we'll take that in note. And maybe in the future it won't be so huge. I don't know why we made it so huge? Uh, but anyway, if we bring that down to 0.5, we might want to scale the button. Dot ska 0.9 um, or something. And there we go. All right, you get the idea. We have been doing this for a while now and have gotten quite used to using a tile like this 
to lay out a little control panel of some sort. It happens quite often. Sometimes, though, I would say about maybe a fifth of the time, we start off by positioning things and then we realize, oh, I've got more things and we try and position those next to them and arrange them. And uh, in the end, we say, oh, geez, we should have made a tile. And it's very easy. We just take away all of the positioning that we did, throw it into a tile, and it's done just like that. <laughs> so great. All right, well, that's what this explore has been about. Uh, is there anything else that we want to take a look at as we do this? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right, uh, our idea. So our idea is rather than having to manually scale these, wouldn't it be nice if there was some way to fit them into a call in a row? So there's also call width. Colon, um, if we said something like 200, let's have a look. This this won't work out very well. Uh, it will, first of all, it ignores now the spacing that we've given it a call width, and you can give it a row. Oh, is it call size? It's call size, I think. Call size and a row size. Yeah, let's try it out. So we test that. Yeah, so now we're 200 pixels apart. <laughs> but unfortunately, they don't sort of pay attention to that. They just get placed. So we can bring in a new guide here. And test that. How the guide works, by the way, is I put something right here at the, at the beginning, and then I move the cursor over to some other place right here, and that says 195, which is roughly 200. Um, and then that's, uh, let's move this to here. What was our call size was 200 and then go to the beginning of the label. Why is that 243? That shouldn't be 240. Oh, uh, I don't know for sure. Let me just try something. Let's put the stepper first. Not that it should make a difference. And I don't think padding makes any difference. Test. So let's try this again. So presumably, is it? Are we aligned left? Ah, oh, we're aligned center. Okay, that would explain it. Uh, yeah. All right. I think that explains it anyway. Yeah, because they're different sizes. So we would want to do that with an aligned left and do the testing. Test. Okay. So we take the and I'll do the swap just so that we can recreate what we had before. Test. All right. So. <laughs> Great. My align left is uh, aligned my label on the on the thing left as well. Uh, actually, I don't need any align. <laughs> then it'll take the default alignments. Great. Okay, let's try this. So um, there it is. And if I move to the edge of the of this stepper here, with I think the edge is the the point is yeah two hundred. And then if I move from the point there, which is here, labels look like they default to 200 wide, or sorry, uh, buttons do. And then I move to the front of the label, that's 200. So this little thing is telling me how far away I am from the guide, so 200. And you can see that the stepper isn't even close to fitting in the 200. Uh, label happens to be 200. So if we go 300, test. Then we put that here and we go to the front of the triangle and it's yeah 296 there. And if I go and put it at the front of the triangle roughly, wherever that is, and I go to the label, it's 301. Okay. So uh, there we go. So how could we make this work? What would be neat is if we could just say something like fit colon 100% or maybe fit H, fit horizontally 100% of the column size, then that would be neat. What that would end up looking like is this, I guess. All of these things would end up getting a dot size, S-I-Z, of 300 if it were 100. So this is what potentially a fit of 100 would do. Ready? Test. 
uh, here. And so, yep, that fits 300. And this thing is from here and that fits 300. And then the label itself too is uh, 300 roughly in width. So that would be good. It's not what I want because I want some spacing. So in other words, we'd want to do something less like three or two, uh, whatever, 290. Possibly it would be good if we honor the spacings here. Don't know why we didn't honor the spacings when we did the column width and, well, we just didn't. So we test that and, oh, that's, uh, that's not what I meant. Um, two, that's amusing, 280, test. All right, and there we've got some 20 pixel spacing in there, I might want more. But I think that could be handy. It's not really what I want with the label. I don't want the label that big. And hence, I, if I don't want it that big, I'd either have to change it afterwards manually. I don't think. You can change things afterwards if you want by, well, either storing each of these in a variable up above or saying const tile is equal to and then accessing them later with something like tile.items at two dot ska point um, well one again test so there we are uh, fitting all the others in at a hundred percent well it's actually not hundred percent because we're this doesn't work yet <laughs> uh, so these are the active things and it's less than a hundred uh, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. I sort of, I, I like that. I think that will come in handy so that we don't have to eyeball our percentages. We can um, make them all one thing and then we could do that and the heights as well. And sort of if we have both the width and the height, it would take whichever one's smaller, I guess. We have fit, full, and fill being three things. Uh, maybe we want to do the same thing. Oh, that would be kind of weird, but uh, maybe maybe good. If we the difference between fit, fill, and full, fit would fit the the minimum, so it would never go outside the box. Fill goes outside the box for sure. It like makes sure that the whole box is filled, and then full would scale both, so you would end up with a scale. Let's just see what that would look like. That would be if we made the call or row size, um, say 100. Well, that's too close to what it is. We'll call it 200, comma. Then we won't see any difference now, I don't think, but it would be the equivalent of sizing it to comma 200 like that. And now what that's going to do is we'll stretch it to be those things so test. So it's basically causing the button to be 200 high, causing this to be 200 high. I don't know what happened to the label. This just seems to have taken the label proportion. Oh, because I rescaled it to, to one. Okay. So size is actually adjusting the scale. You can tell by how it's operating here. There's other ways to adjust these rectangles so that they don't do that. But anyway, at the moment they do. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be too great with our components here, but it would be handy with things like rectangles. We could then tile a bunch of rectangles that just then fit the column size and the row size without even having to think about it. Although that's pretty easy to do anyway. <laughs> All right. Hey, this has been a Zim Explorer and I am Dr. Abstract. I hope you've uh, had a good time. We may have gone a bit overboard there, but uh, you get the idea of how we're using tiles to do layout. Cheers. <laughs>